So the first thing you want to make sure that you have is your data set for the academic term and that would be your student data and the academic records for each student. Now, many of you, just like me, would have had your class broken out into different classes on Google Classroom. That's okay. Just export that data from um, Google Classroom into a Google Sheet and clean up the data for each of the classes. And then you can bring them all into one Google Sheet, similar to how I have it later here. Now, I have different tabs for each of the classes here, like mathematics, language arts, uh, social studies, and science. And I try to remain consistent in how I lay out my, my data for each of these tabs. And then I brought it all into one tab called class grades. Now, the next thing you want to make sure you have sorted out is your column names. Just try to keep it short and simple and follow a format that you will be able to remember. If you notice here, each of my column um, names begin with a capital letter. And in the case where I use two words in the column names, then each of those words begin with a capital letter. Another way to shorten the column names is to probably only use the first letter of the first word and the last word join that together, like T remarks and P remarks, teacher's remarks and principal's remarks, and P signature and T signature. So it's good to retain consistency in how you name these column names because you will be using these as tags in your autocrat add-on. So the next thing you want to do is to build out your report template for your class. Now, I'm, I've built out this report for the Bridgetown Primary School, which is a fit school, by the way, using the column tags from the Google Sheet data. Now, I'm just going to scroll down here so you can see what it actually looks like. You can mimic the school report, your existing school report that you have, and that may turn out to be two or three pages. That is okay. As long as you retain the column names for your tags, you would want to build a report that will retain the layout after you've printed the report. So we will look at that more when we go over to the Autocrat tool and when we are mapping the columns and testing how it actually looks in preview mode. So let's go over to the Autocrat tool and install it in our Google Sheet. Now it's time to install the Autocrat add-on. To do that, you can just come to the add-on drop-down menu right here and then come down to Get Add-ons. Now it's going to bring up the G Suite Marketplace where you can search for the Autocrat add-on. If it doesn't appear here at the top of your list, you can always search right here, just type in Autocrat, and it would begin to show up in the list of um, add-ons there. Just hover over the add-on, click on it, and then click on click install. It's gonna ask for permissions to um, install, and just click continue, and then click allow at the bottom of this list. Well, first of all, you need to select your account first, and then, um, click continue at the bottom of the list here. So I'll click allow and then let it go through its process for installing the add-on and it's finished now. Install, return to your Google Sheet page and then go back to the add-on drop-down menu and you can see the add-on appears here. So you can hover over there or click on it and then click open and it will bring up the autocrat interface. And here I'll be able to see um, if I have any existing jobs from before or, or I can add a new job. So I have one existing job right here and I can also add a new job right here. For existing jobs, you can edit the existing job. You can um, delete the existing job as well. Um, but that is your choice. I want to click on new job. And for this example, I don't think you have any jobs here if you're now setting it for the first time. So clicking on new job, it will take me to interface where I am allowed to enter the name. Now I'm glad this error message came out here because for many of you who are using the exported data from Google Classroom, you will um, encounter this um, once you use retain that same format. That is because your data does not start at row number one and you may have merged columns in your, um, in your Google Sheet uh, form. So just click OK here for now and we will correct that error as we go ahead and report. So I'm gonna name this report class one report and then click next. All right, and then I'm, I have to select my template here that I built out before. Now, if you don't see a template in this list in here, you can also select a template from Drive um, wherever you have it stored. To view the template, you can just click view. Um, we've already viewed it, so I'm just gonna click use and it's going to uh, bring in my template. I'll select a template here 
that I am using. So I'm going to click next and start mapping my tags. Now remember I said that your data does not begin from row number one and because of that the mapping is a bit off. So just be sure that you're actually in the correct tab that you want to map and it is class grid so I'll just leave it as that. But my header rows actually begin from row number two so I may want to change that from row number one to row number two. Right, and as you can see, most of the errors that I've got um, got under are gone. Um, so now this um, first row data begins at row number two, which can't be because the data actually begins um, the row after row number two. So I just select row number three for that to um, take effect. All right, so I'm still getting a message here that says two on map tags. So let's scroll down and look for those on map tags and fix that. All right, so it says overall average. Why am I getting this? Because I have a space after average. So it isn't, sorry, I have a space before over, overall. So it's always important to make sure that you don't have any spaces or extra spaces between the words because or because that would that would um, cause serious problems and one space can really make a big difference um, in your naming convention. And also the portments also has given me that error. I'm going to click this draw down arrow here. You can see here that it's missing one S, just an S. And because of that S, it did not map. So you want to make sure that these tags are mapped um, correctly and you are copying the exact name within the table columns. All right, so let's go back up to the top because there's some other things that we want to fix here. Now, for this image tag here, it's saying that the type is standard and it would treat the data within that image column as text. That is not what it wants. I want it to be an image type. So I just click the journal arrow as I just did and select image. Then I'm going to enter the width here because it allows me to set the width and height of it. So it's going to be 75 width, 75 height. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom because I have two more images here and that's the principal signature and the teacher signature. Same thing, select image, set the width. This one is going to be 100 width. 35 height, then come down to the bottom again, and this is going to be image type again. Come down just a bit more, select width 100, select height 35. All right, enter height. All right, so everything seems fine here. Um, everything is mapped, so I'm going to click next and enter my file name. Now, this is important. Now, you can use the tags here actually rename each file and you would want each um, child report to contain um, his or her name so I'm going to use tag um, the student tag you could have used ID if you want to but student tag for me is fine so it's student report card term 3 2020 all right and I'm going to select the type as a PDF because I don't want it to be an editable document I'm going to leave it as multiple output mode because I want to print all of the reports and as you would assume single output mode will only print one report. So um, let's click next. All right, so it's asking me here to choose a destination folder and I'm going to click choose folder and it will take me to my drive where I have a list of folders here that I can choose from. I'm going to choose this class one report, um, term two, 2020, because so that's the one I created for this purpose. And then click next. Now this um, add dynamic folder reference is optional. I'm not going to use it here in this example, so I'll click next. So the set merge condition, um, this is also optional, but I'm going to, I am going to use this because if you notice here at the bottom, it says um, class average with no ID. This was, this call, this rule is really for summary data and not really to be printed in a report. So the, when I, once I click add condition, it give it brought up a default condition, which is um, first row, first column, sorry, ID equals not no. Um, all right, and then I'm going to click next. All right, so this, I love this part, share document. I'm going to click yes on this. And I'm sharing it as a PDF, and I don't want um, the collaborators to actually reshare it, so I'll select that, so I'll select no. And send from generic no re uh, reply email address, I'll select yes. All right, so here now, um, this is very nice. You can actually use the tags um, to, um, instead of typing everyone's email address, you can use the email tag within the data here. So looking at my email column, I have a list of all of the um, students' email addresses. 
that you can use to send to um, to everyone. You can see the list of tags here. Just click on the tag and it will copy it to the clipboard as it says here. And that will be fine. Let's close this. So you can enter the email tag as I said. Email. Alright, so then I am going to come down here to subject and I'm going to type in term three report 2020. And I can place my body and my text in the body here. So I have here my text and I'm saying dear student. So it's going to address each student by name and so on and so on and so on. Can you find the attached for it? Have a wonderful summer. That's it. <laughs> All right. So that is finished. So I'm going to click next. And so I'm going to leave this trigger as no, I'm not going to use this in this example. And plus, this only really works when you have a form attached to the Google Sheet document. So I'm going to leave that as it is and then click Save. So it's saving my job and just wait for this process to complete. All right, so that has been saved now. And I want to preview my um, reports, this job, before I actually print it out and send it to everyone. So just let me click on Preview. And then just waiting for it to um, merge these rows for me to preview. It's giving me a summary data here of what I um, entered into the job. So I can choose to edit and change anything, or once it's finished, as it is right now, I can click preview mergeable row. It's only going to show me one um, student um, for the preview, though. It's not going to give me the list or show me reports for every single student. So just waiting for it to generate the preview from me. This will take. Um, this can take long or it can be short, depending on how many students, uh, how many rows you have to merge um, in your report. So, and how, actually how long the report is as well. So sometimes it takes a while well, and then sometimes it happens quickly. All right, so finish here. All right, so I have the report. I can click this link here to review it, to preview it, sorry. And it's gonna bring up a PDF where you can preview the report for Amanda Reef. So here's the report. Here is the um, image, the ID, the student um, in image. And as you can see, it pulls in the name and all the other um, fields that were map as well. I'm going to scroll down so you can see the rest. All right, so everything seems to be pulled in nicely right down to the teacher's remarks. All right, right, and all that's left is to send this report off next. So just let me go back to my um, autocrat tool. I can close that. I'm satisfied with everything here. So I'm going to click run job and this will now um, run the job as far as the reports for each of the child here. So it's going to take a while, as I said, because I have 12 rows. It's going to have to merge all of those reports, but it is definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Instead of having to go and manually write out reports and review reports, you can do this all here. Just make sure your data is set. Is, has been reviewed. If you had to get a second marker, get the second marker to review your data and run it through AutoCRAT um, using the template that you would build out for your class and it will make your life easier. Yes, it will. So now my reports are, have been merged and they have been printed. I need to go over to my Google Drive where I actually select the destination folder for these reports to be stored. So I'm going to go over to my Google Drive now and do that. Okay, so I'm over in my Google Drive and I'm clicking on my class one report term three, um, 2020. And you can see all of the reports that would have been printed for each of the students here. All right, I'm scrolling down. So I'm going to click on one of them. Let's click on this Malik student here. All right, so I am seeing here that everything was pulled in fine. Right. Even the emojis that I placed in the comments on the Google Sheet, they were posing. Well, okay. All right. And going over to the next one. Okay. Everything looks fine. Malia looks fine as well. All right. Okay. So this is this is this is good and this is useful. You can then review them if you don't want to send them as yet. Like how I did in the share option, you don't have to share it right away. But you can review them here and maybe share it with the principal or other administrators for the um for the um school and then send them after.